Hello and welcome to the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series. Live tonight from Richmond Raceway for the V-Speed 150 at Richmond. Race number seven of the season. Looking forward to some exciting short track action here from Richmond, Virginia. The three-quarter mile racetrack that's been changed over the years, but provides some of the most exciting racing action on the NASCAR circuit. Looking forward to these guys getting side by side and racing it up throughout the night. 150 miles here. It's going to take place over 200 laps and we do have three stages starting uh, with stage one at lap 60, stage two at lap 120 and the end of the race of course lap 200. We want to welcome you to V-Speed for the V-Speed 150. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's take a look at the points for the drivers coming in tonight as they are starting to uh, set themselves up to advance into the playoffs and we'll see where each driver finds themselves coming into tonight's race. So we look at the top 20 in the points. Ryan Gemmel is your points leader. No victories. He does have one stage win to his credit, but uh, no wins yet on the season. Looking for the first one here tonight. He is currently fourth fastest on the practice charts. Behind him it is Keith Mayato looking for his first victory as well. He does have a few stage wins or a couple stage wins and looking to find that first race win of the season just six points or uh, just four points back of his teammate there Ryan Gemmel and then another v-speed driver Seth Hatchell he does have a victory back at Daytona race number one of the season but uh, looking for his second here tonight currently fastest on the practice charts uh, Mark Emerson last week's winner uh, looking for his uh, it should say two victories in that column, but looking for his third of the season. Then A.J. Stravato right there behind him with uh, multiple wins as well. Uh, so sorry about that. He has three victories this season, two stage wins as well. But the, uh, the point graphic is off. Uh, Chris Samard in sixth, Say Fair is seventh. Eric Gallion very quick tonight in practice. He is eighth. Tony Baird ninth. And Dennis Faircloth comes into tonight tenth in the points. And then you can see the rest of the drivers there inside the top 16 trying to keep those spots to themselves. And a few drivers on the outside, including Jeremiah Vincent, Dale Glessner, Justin Carey, and Kevin Cornelius looking to climb up in there in contention to advance. But only three drivers locked in so far. And uh, here you can see the contenders on the outside looking in 21st through 40th positions. Some of these guys are really going to have to pick it up here over these last few races. And they are going to need some uh, unfortunate circumstances from the drivers inside the top 16, most likely, or they're going to have to find themselves in victory lane over the course of the next few weeks. So it should be a lot of fun here to, to watch those storylines and see how everything progresses throughout the night. Let's take a look at the qualifying boards as drivers are headed out onto the racetrack for qualifying in tonight's event. Lane Sulford's just getting rolling here. Chris Samard appears to be up to speed in the V-Speed Camaro. He gets down into turn number one. This track can be so tricky, especially this part right here out of turn number two. And then he dives into turn three. It can be very difficult under braking. Very easy to lose the back end. And turn four, just as tricky as turn two but it often won't feel as tricky. But down into turn one, this is where we'll see a lot of drivers uh, really lock it up under braking. And then coming out of turn two, we'll see a lot of cars loop it around most likely. But Samard currently fastest with a 21.78. Nick Alves second quick, he is thir uh, three tenths or three hundredths off. And Samard will improve to a 21.56, so two tenths faster than his first lap. As it appears, Safe Fair is on track as well. The 44 machine looking for his first victory of the season, but with many stage wins to his credit. Now Dallas Sullivan goes to second on the board. Watching for some of the top drivers and points to uh, jump up there. Keith Mayato has one lap in 22.48. <clears throat> so obviously taking it very easy on that lap. And lap number two, he will pick it up to a 21.46. That'll be good for fastest. He'll take it away from his teammate. And Mayato looking for another pole this season. And 
and uh, looking at the weather tonight, 83 degree track temp, so plenty cool here for these drivers. As, uh, let's actually go on board here with Brandon Vasquez, who's been very quick in qualifying over the last few races. As he goes to 20th with the initial outlap and then down into turn three. You can hear him wait on the throttle here. And just eases back into it up towards that outside wall. He'll improve to a 2181, which will be uh, 11th right now. Not too bad of a qualifying effort. Ryan, Ryan Gemmel, the points leader, out here on the racetrack on his first hot lap. He takes it down into turn number three. And across the start finish line, that'll be a 2191 on lap number one. Good for 15th fastest as he dives it into one. And out of turn number two. Back on the gas, nice and hard there. And uh, down into turn three. Right up to that outside wall. 2149, that'll be second fastest. Just three hundredths behind his teammate Keith Maiato, and he is going to be right in between teammates and affiliate or satellite team members. Kevin Cornelius up there in fourth, Safe Ferris in fifth. So very strong performances. But Eric Galleon to the top of the board, the number 33 who ran so well here last season. He jumps to the top of that scoring pylon. Mark Emerson rolling out onto the racetrack. Taking his uh, sweet old time. We still have oh, about 10 drivers, maybe more yet to take a qualifying time. Uh, in among those is Seth Hatchell, AJ Stravato. Now Mark Emerson up to speed here. He'll go across the line very quick here in the off season race for this series. Ultimately came up just, uh, I think, one or two positions short. Keith Maiato winning that uh, exhibition race. But Emerson down into turn three and four. Up across the start finish line. A 21.65 for lap one is a very strong first lap. That'll put him 10th on the board. Right between Nick Starling and Cody Adkins. And pushing it a little bit harder here on lap number two. And out of turn four, across the line, he will improve to a 21.51. That'll be good for fourth fastest. He'll knock Chris Samard down a position. Still waiting on AJ Stravato, who dominated this race last year. He has not gotten onto the racetrack so waiting on a bunch of drivers to take times. We are going to go to a commercial break and be right back with your starting grid. buddy you ready for the big game you're gonna be there right dad pal you can count on me i wouldn't miss it for the world hey honey josh's flight landed early he'll be about 6 30. can you make it okay i'm on my way 
We've got total gridlock out there this afternoon. The average American spends over 40 hours a year, nearly two full days, stuck in traffic on our broken roads and bridges, while our lives move full speed ahead. It doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> Where is he? Husband's on his way. <laughs> It's time for Washington to get America moving again by finally funding our country's infrastructure. Where's mom? Tell Washington to fund America's infrastructure because life won't wait. V-Speed is proud to be partnered with Below the Double Yellow podcast, a podcast for NASCAR fans by NASCAR fans. Listen to Nick and Joe discuss all the latest on-track action available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. B-Speed is also proud to present the 2021 Below the Double Yellow Cup Series brought to you by the American Trucking Association starting January 14th, 825 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursdays at twitch.tv slash vspeedsim. And back at the racetrack now, just 20 seconds left in the qualifying session, and it looks like uh, 27 drivers have taken a time, and that is going to be it for the drivers uh, to take a qualifying lap. We do have a few drivers moving to the back of the field uh, from um, some incidents last week. Justin Carey will uh, drop to the back here. AJ Stravato. We'll start from the rear, and Eric Hutton also starting from the back of the pack. So it'll be interesting to see those drivers make their way towards the front. As we are all set with qualifying, going to head to our starting grid to see where your favorite drivers are starting in tonight's race. Let's take a look. Starting with row number one, Eric Galleon, your pole sitter. What a great lap there. 21.455 puts him in front of the field. Who's outside? It's going to be Keith Maiato at 21.469. Congratulations to both drivers. For the great great times here in uh, qualifying tonight starting in row number two it's going to be ryan gemmel your points leader looking to build on that points lead mark emerson starting on the outside looking for a uh, second straight victory after winning last week at charlotte we'll see what he can do here tonight after uh, starting from the second row chris samard starting in fifth here kevin cornelius going to be starting in the sixth spot seventh will be safe ferris eric hutton uh, will be dropping to the rear. Qualified eighth, though. Dylan Teal starting in ninth. Nick Starling going to round out the top ten on the starting grid. In 11th, it's Cody Adkins. 12th, Lane Sulfridge. 13th, Eric Lambert. 14th, Dallas Sullivan. 15th is Brandon Vasquez. 16th, Nick Alves. 17th, Alan Dice. 18th, Lyle Sulfridge. 19th, Dennis Steele. And 20th is Nick Gardner. 21st, Tony Baird. 22nd, the birthday boy, apparently, Brett Somers in the number seven machine. Happy birthday there, Brett. 23rd, Zach Smith. 24th, Timmy Emanuele. 25th, TJ Brendel. 26th, Dennis Fairclaw. 27th, Robert Gilmore, the last of the drivers to take a qualifying time. 
AJ Stravato, 28th on the grid. He'll be sent to the rear here tonight. Seth Hatchell not taking a time. He'll roll off 29th. Jeremiah Vincent starting in 30th in tonight's race. Jordan Scheffler starting 31st. Joey Mines, 32nd. 33rd is Justin Carey. He'll drop to the rear as well. Jordan Brockle, 34th. Rounding out the field here tonight, Kyle Payne, the number 68 machine in 35th position. So a good size field. Going to be a very exciting one from Richmond Raceway. As Eric Gallion will have control of the start of the race with the 36 machine to his outside. Both of these drivers have shown their short track skills. Eric Gallion has had a fantastic start to the season and looking for a victory here in the below the double yellow cup series. How great would it be to get one here in the regular season and lock yourself into the playoffs? Senior Musifer in the chat, cheering on Simulators Anonymous Racing. Those drivers in the field here tonight. And, uh, of course, cheer on your favorite driver. Let us know you're out there. And we'll try and follow along with them throughout the race. Always love to hear the voice of the fans during the broadcast. Love to interact with you guys. and Hope you are enjoying the races so far this season. As it will be Eric Gallion and Keith Mayato on the front row. It looked like Mayato was going to have the pole, but Gallion on his second lap knocked him off by uh, just over a hundredth of a second. And we are about to get going from Richmond Raceway. Race number seven of the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series season, sponsored by the American Trucking Association. Green flag in the air. We're off and underway for stage one in the V-Speed 250. It's Eric Gallion down into turn number one. Gets a good advantage over Keith Mayato, who's stuck up in that high line. And now Ryan Gemmel looking to the inside for second position. But uh, Mayato with a great run down the backstretch, although he keeps the door open. And Gemmel going to try and get in there and battle for that spot. But lap one goes to Eric Gallion. Thank you for the subscription, The Real Mail. Thanks for tuning in, man. Hope you are enjoying it so far. Just getting things kicked off. And Eric Gallion showing the way in a Jolly Rancher Camaro. Keith Mayato second at the moment. Now Mark Emerson will take third away from Ryan Gemmel. So Ryan in that low line not able to make it work. But he drops into fourth. Chris Samard in fifth. And Kevin Cornelius rides behind him in the sixth spot. Nick Starling, one of our uh, top 16 drivers, I believe he's actually... Uh, comes into this race pretty well in the uh, the top 16. But uh, looking for another strong run here. He's had a, a much better start to this season than he did last year where he ended up making the final four. And how about Dylan Teal up here in the mix early on in eighth position? As it is all Eric Gallion out in front, leading by about three, four car lengths over Keith Mayato, and actually stretching that just a little bit. But Mayato starting to pull a little bit of a gap over Mark Emerson. That's just a, a couple car lengths at the moment, but those two I'd expect to be up in the mix all race long based on how they ran in the exhibition race. I got to run around uh, Mark and Keith quite a bit in that event and uh, definitely have some skills here at this racetrack. But everybody single file for the moment. You see Eric Lambert brushes the wall back there. He rides in the 10th position, but the three car, little brush with the barrier early on. And uh, I was talking about Nick Starling up here in seventh. He actually comes into the race 13th in points. I thought he was a few positions higher, but uh, at this point, last season, he was uh, he was quite a bit farther back, so some improvement by the driver of the 99. Good to see as uh, we've got the three V-Speed and Red Speed cars up here. Uh, nose to tail for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Nobody making a move on one another just yet. Everybody pretty well single file. 
Go back a little farther. We do have a battle side by side between Nick Alves and Alan Dice. Alan showing off a uh, new paint scheme. Kind of an invert from what he normally runs. The, the camo in the middle there and then the safety orange. Is the, uh, the accent color there. Nice looking car. Behind them, it is Lyle Sulfridge in the 16th spot. Tony Baird, who's had some good runs this season, in 17th. Jeremiah Vincent, who has had kind of a surprising rough start to this season. Uh, on the outside, looking in. Well, look at this right behind him. A.J. Stravato started 28th. I actually believe he started farther back than that. And he is already up to 19th. So picking his way through this field, we'll see how he makes... Uh, makes the move here on Jeremiah Vincent, but already making some great progress early on in this race. Also, Seth Hatchell back here in 25th. He, I believe, started right back there as well. But Seth, uh, usually quite patient when it comes to uh, working his way through the pack. He might have the speed, but he doesn't really show it until he gets up there and over be racing with you but uh, working on Timmy Emanuele right now as he looks to the inside Timmy gives him room at the last second and they'll go side by side out of turn number two this for the 24th position as you can see some cars behind them struggling with the rear grip a pretty good circulation around the speedway here you can see Hatchell already about a half lap down as the leaders work down into turn number three it is Eric Gallion, Keith Maiato, Mark Emerson. And then we've got a side-by-side -side battle back there. Kevin Cornelius, he's going to get a little tap, I think, from Nick Starling. They are side-by-side -side down into turn one. Let's see if we can take a look at what just happened right there. The 70 or 17 up the racetrack just gets loose, I think. I don't know if Nick made any contact with him. So it doesn't appear to be damage on either race car. But uh, they are still racing it up side by side. This is sixth position in the balance right here. The American Trucking Association, Toyota Camry on the outside. He's going to get a really good run out of turn two, nearly clear himself down into turn three. But the 17 of Kevin Cornelius dives it down in there, and they will remain side by side. So the first battle for position on track going on for a few laps here in that may be the case for quite a few of these battles tonight. Pretty difficult to uh, complete a pass, especially if you're very close in speed. You see the 17 big wheel spin out of the corner there. And really deep into the turn on the brakes. That time through turn number three. And out in front, it is Eric Gallion. He's led all the laps so far. As now Keith Maiato starting to close in down to about three car lengths behind the 33 machine. And then Mark Emerson splitting up the V-speed Camaros right now between Maiato and Gemmel. And uh, Nick Starling not able to make the pass work on the outside of Kevin Cornelius. Now he's under fire from Dylan Teal, and I don't mean... That as a joke, that 78 car on fire there, but uh, he is picking up some speed, and Nick Starling starting to struggle with the rear grip of that race car as Cody Adkins now on the back bumper trying to make the pass. The top nine have pulled quite a distance away from Brandon Vasquez in 10th, and then it's about another second back to Eric Lambert, another second back to Lane Sulfridge, who's... About to get passed by AJ Stravato. This is for 12th position. So Stravato absolutely tearing through this field and trying to get up into a points paying stage position. And he is bringing Jeremiah Vincent right along with him. Eric Hutton also right there behind them after starting from the rear. Saw Eric have some very good short track races last season and uh, Looks to have some speed here tonight as he works up into 14th. Dallas Sullivan in the 46, trying to make the pass, and yellow flag will fly. It looks like the one car of Zach Smith 
and the 20 of Joey Mines involved in this one. And that'll bring out the first caution just 20 laps into the race. Let's take a look at what happened. And uh, appears to just be a classic case of pushing the car a little bit too hard out of turn number four. You see Zach goes in. He's in the second groove. Just can't get that car to rotate enough. And then it rotates too much when he doesn't want it to. And into the number 20 of Joey Mines right there. And uh, Joey ends up getting quite a bit more damage, actually, than the one car. But they stay on the lead lap. As do the rest of the drivers, other than Safe Ferris, who missed the start and is currently down 16 laps. So, uh, going to be an impossible battle for Safe, but we'll see how many points he can gain by just uh, staying out here and picking up a few spots. And taking a look at drivers coming to pit lane. Looks like Eric Gallion, your race leader, brought it in. He'll hand the lead over to Keith Maiato as the top 25 drivers stay out on the racetrack. So Ryan Gemmel came in with him. Uh, Nick Starling, Seth Hatchell, Joey Mines, Jordan Shepard, Nick Gardner, Zach Smith, Robert Gilmore. And uh, Safe Ferris should get a lucky dog here. I'm not sure if he's already gotten it. Uh, but Zach Smith appears to be going a lap down. So he missed his opportunity. It looks like Robert Gilmore also going a lap down. He missed his opportunity to get off pit lane, and I don't know why he's still sitting there. I guess waiting for the field to pass him. He will have to go to the tail end no matter what. But Keith Maiato, your race leader. He'll be on the front row for this restart with Mark Emerson. Welcome, Blazer Pete. Thanks for joining us here tonight. As pace truck lights remain on, we are going to go to a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. Boston Web Marketing is New England's largest full-service web marketing company specializing in SEO, SEM, website design, social media management, reputation management, and more. Founded in 2009, we have rapidly expanded and are able to service small to large clients nationally as well as worldwide. We are a long-standing Google partner with a large team of SEO specialists, certified AdWords professionals, web designers, social media experts, and web marketing gurus. Our team provides excellent, knowledgeable, and highly effective web marketing services. Contact us today to get started. 617-676-8109 www.getfoundquick.com That was a quick message from Boston Web Marketing, one of the sponsors of the league here. Check them out. Boston Web Marketing, getfoundquick.com. Brett Somers, the birthday boy tonight, currently riding in the 18th position. Uh, after starting in 22nd, he has picked up a few spots. Looking to start moving forward even more. And it is going to be Keith Maiato, Mark Emerson, in control of this Restart, my auto gets a pretty good jump there, but the 32 of Emerson, he timed it just right, and he will stay within arm's reach of the 36 down into turn number one, and these two have had their share of troubles uh, all season, but uh, most notably over in the virtual racing league, not over here in the below the double yellow cup series, but they have been around each other a lot. And now Mark starting to look to the inside. He is putting a lot of pressure on the 36. But Keith currently hanging on to that race lead. These two have started to pull away by a few car lengths now over Kevin Cornelius. The 37 of Chris Samard right there as well. I want to take a look back here 
um, at the drivers who pitted. Eric Gallion, I believe, was the first of the drivers to take tires, but he currently has been passed up by quite a few in uh, Seth Hatchell, Ryan Gemmel. As we are just about halfway through stage number one, you can see Seth Hatchell up to 22nd, his teammate uh, right there in front of him in 21st. Gemmel did pit, and uh, he's trying to carve his way back up through. Nearly runs over the uh, 70 of Lyle Selfridge. Now he'll make the pass, but uh, or attempt to make the pass, but caution is going to fly, and that is on the front straightaway. Ooh, the 99 of Nick Starling. Was he involved? No, the 39 of Timmy Emanuele with the majority of the damage here. So he takes a heavy hit and cautions, breeding cautions. The Viking City Motorsports machine up in smoke here on lap number 30. Let's take a look at what happened. I'm surprised I didn't see it out of the, my peripheral vision. The 39 into the wall, he gets into Seth Hatchell and oh, clobbered by the 22. The 28 of uh, Dennis Steele as well. He actually gets a little bit lucky there with the way that he ended up pretty much going through the car. But Joey Mine or uh, TJ Brendel with big damage. See the 28 as he works out of the corner here. Right on through. But uh, big hit for TJ Brendel. Let's go on board with the nose cam. The 39 into the wall. Ooh, the 16 of Nick Gardner. Man, what a close call there for him. Actually does get a bit of damage. But uh, could have been a lot worse for Nick. He'll survive that wreck and continue to race on. I think Nick uh, actually works for Colleague Racing. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, in the Colleague paint scheme. AJ Allmendinger with a pretty solid run last week at the uh, Daytona Road Course. Has a few cars involved in that one. A few more going to bring it down the pit lane this time. And uh, we are under the yellow flag for the second time in tonight's race. We're going to hear a quick message about V-Speed here in the V-Speed 150. Welcome to V-Speed, your home for sim racing excitement, providing dramatic moments from iRacing and beyond. We offer broadcasting for leagues across iRacing, with specialized packages to help grow your league and advertise your sponsors. Shot at it, I think, and right now Stravato with that advantage. It's half a car length, the difference between first and second. Going into turn one, he gives the bumper to Connor Horn. Jim, these two have gone all year to get to this point. Jacob Shorba drifting up the racetrack. They make contact. The 88 goes around. The 95 goes around. The 12 caught in it. Our design team can help you create anything from paint schemes to sim rig parts with expertise in both 2D and 3D design with 3D printing capabilities. Looking to get into broadcasting yourself? We can help you design and operate custom overlays to make your stream look as professional as possible. Our team can create and manage custom merchandise sales for you and your team. Check out our shop to see what we have in stock and how we can create some awesome merch for you. Check out our race replays on YouTube or catch us live weekly on Twitch. Visit us at vspeedsim.com to see how we can help you on your iRacing journey. And back at the racetrack now, Keith Maiato, still your race leader. 34 laps down. And quite a few left to go. We've had two cautions here in rapid succession. But a nice 20 lap run to open things up. And uh, drivers were pretty well spaced out. Uh, just a couple of really self-inflicted uh, mistakes for drivers towards the rear of the field. 
in uh, these first two cautions as we are about to get going. Green flag back out. Few drivers spinning tires, including Kevin Cornelius. Right there behind the race leader, we saw the 23 of Brandon Vasquez as well. Starting to spin his tires. Look at AJ Stravato up here in the top 10 now. Starting to march forward even further. He's currently boxed in in that high line. And Eric Hutton right there behind him. He is going to let him into the lower lane. AJ trying to uh, get a good exit here out of turn four. Gets to the inside of Brandon Vasquez. And uh, no challenge there. Brandon just lets him go. And uh, he's going to be in a difficult position here with the 77 of Hutton as well. Trying to get to the inside. And he will do so. So down into turn number three, Eric Hutton trying to move up into the eighth spot. And he will take that away. Brandon Vasquez looking for a place to get down in line. And it looks like he may have a spot there with the three of Eric Lambert getting a little bit loose on exit. And now behind them, side by side, the nine of Jeremiah Vincent. The three of Eric Lambert battling it out. Dallas Sullivan and Alan Dice also fighting for position here. So a nice little uh, couple battles. You see Ryan Gemmel, Dennis Faircloth also racing it up. Dennis uh, back to his normal Geico scheme. And uh, he is going to let the six machine right on pass. So Dennis back to 15th, trying to uh, survive here, I think, in these early laps. Nick Alves with the brush against the wall. Right around a half second back to Mark Emerson. And uh, Kevin Cornelius has rebounded from that uh, kind of poor restart very well as he hangs on to third position right in front of uh, affiliate teammate Chris Samard, who rides in fourth. Cody Adkins in fifth, but he is under pressure. And A.J. Stravato from the back to the top five here in just about 40 laps a couple of cautions thrown in the mix there and a good job by AJ to climb through this pack is Mark Emerson not as strong here in the opening laps of this run not able to put the pressure on Keith Maiato who's gotten out to about a 7 10th lead Kevin Cornelius now putting the pressure on trying to take second away and uh, you'll see these drivers kind of change their entry into the corner as the runs go on Initially, you'll see him get down to the inside line. You might start seeing a little bit of uh, a half a car length or a car width, uh, rather, up off that yellow line as the run progresses. And looking for some battles back here. Everybody pretty much single file within the top 10 and uh, within the top 15. But here is the first battle, Dallas Sullivan. And Dennis Faircloth as the 46 tries to pinch the 80 down. They make a little bit of contact there into turn three. And the Fancy Feast machine hangs onto it. Got a little boop there from the, uh, the 80 of Dennis Faircloth. He said, that's my job to do that. And he is going to take that spot back away. But here comes the 80 still challenging down low. Dallas really dives it into turn three. That'll keep the door open for the 80 cars. They nearly make contact again. This is a very intense battle. And uh, looking on from behind, Seth Hatchell, uh, who's got that right side damage now, might be affecting the handling or the uh, the kind of skew or yaw of that, uh, that race car. Let's take a look from his front end here as he works up uh, inside the top 20. Now looks to the inside of Nick Alves. Big slide there from Dennis Faircloth. And now Alan Dice going to go to the outside of the 80 car. And that is such a difficult thing to do to exit that corner side by side. And uh, Dennis really starting to struggle here as he gets back to the throttle pretty early there in the middle of the turn. We've got some smoke farther up. Not sure what that is from. But Seth here just kind of uh, minding his own business, looking for an opportunity to make some passes as uh, he will pull up alongside the 57, but the 57 crosses over the 80. And Seth evasive manu maneuvers there to avoid contact. And we have had a change for second. That is Kevin Cornelius in the 17 car, trying to track down Keith Maiato now as Mark Emerson falls into the hands of Chris Samard and AJ Stravato. Chris a little bit loose on entry right there, but able to hang on to that car. 
still. How about Cody Adkins here? The Taco Bell machine with a pretty good run in seventh right now. And uh, closing in on the end of stage number one. The driver's working in to turn three. It is Keith Miata with a 1.3 second advantage. And actually pulling away last time by two tenths faster than Kevin Cornelius. And about a tenth faster than anyone on equal tires. Ryan Gemmel, uh, I believe fastest car on the racetrack with a 22.35. He's putting some pressure on Cody Adkins. A couple cars back from him. Eric Gallion, your pole sitter. Starting to work on the back bumper of Jeremiah Vincent. And uh, starting to climb through this field as well. He finds himself in 10th. Would probably like some more stage points if he can get them. But, uh, you know, has done a good job of navigating the traffic. And uh, Seth Hatchell, the next car on those fresh tires, up to 15th. He's done a pretty solid job as well after having to start from the rear, or towards the rear, rather. And putting some pressure on Dallas Sullivan, the 46th. Going to go to the second groove there. A car slow on the apron. That was Timmy Emanuele back on the racetrack with the uh, the car somewhat put back together. And trying to get it up to speed and merge in a, a nice spot. Looks like Justin Carey might have fallen through here. He might have wrecked out. Uh, right now we have tw 29 cars on the lead lap. Jordan Brockle is uh, the last car on the lead lap, about 17.1 seconds back. Just has to hold on here for about seven more laps. Uh, but Keith Maiato not too far behind him. And uh, at the moment, Keith uh, is running... Oh, about six tenths a lap faster. So he he could be pretty close. When things uh, shuffle out, Jordan right now just going into one and two. And uh, Keith now through the exit of turn two. So closing in for sure. Trying to look at some battles going on around here. I think we might have one with Ryan Gemmel, who's actually moved up into the top five, starting to put some pressure on AJ Stravato. So the fresh tires really working for Ryan. As uh, this is about where he was before he took tires. Kevin Cornelius lost his spot back to Mark Emerson. And uh, the 48 of AJ Stravato now going to put some pressure on him to take away third. And uh, not able to complete the pass just yet. Kevin, a good run out of turn number four. But AJ really hard on the brakes here into turn number one. Keeps that car under control. And he'll get right alongside the 17 down the back straightaway. Kevin Cornelius can't put the power down. Now he's in danger of losing fourth to Ryan Gemmel. And Ryan trying to maybe go two for one. Uh, but not able to get quite the exit. Now actually looks to the inside of Stravato. The 48 can't quite uh, shut the door. So this will be a battle down the back straightaway. Gemmel with a good run here. The 48 can't close that door, like I said. And Ryan with a very strong run out of turn four. He may take away third before it's all said and done. And Keith Maiato going to put Timmy Emanuele another lap down. Jordan Brockle hanging on for dear life here. It'll be one more to go for him. Uh, in just a moment is Keith Maiato. Only about two seconds back. So uh, definitely going to have to find some speed in the 84 car. But Maiato looks like he's on his way to another stage win. As he goes out of turn number two. All the way out there in front of Mark Emerson. It's 2.3 seconds the margin. As he is starting to close in on Robert Gilmore who is one lap down already. It is going to be Keith Maiato across the start finish line. He'll win stage number one. The V Speed Camaro winning stage one in the V Speed 150. As the caution will fly, we'll take a look at the stage results. That being your top 10 earning stage points. Keith Maiato earning another playoff point. He has three stage wins 
so far this season. And uh, that'll add another one to it. That is four stage wins now for Keith. Mark Emerson second, Ryan Gimmel third, AJ Stravato fourth, Kevin Cornelius fifth, Eric Hutton sixth, Josiah or uh, Jeremiah Vincent seventh, Eric Gallion eighth, Chris Samar ninth, Cody Adkins rounding out the top ten here in stage number one. And I'd expect any driver that has not pitted to uh, to bring it in here. Some drivers may stay on track. But uh, it does not appear so. As it looks like pretty much everybody going to make their way down. Tony Baird going to stay out. But, uh, and a few lap cars as well. Yeah, Tony Baird staying on the racetrack. He is the only driver to not pit. Keith Maata will win the battle off pit road. We'll try and get an interview in with one of these drivers uh, before we get back to the green flag. So Tony Baird staying out. He's going to lead a couple laps here. Let's see if we can get a word in with... Let's see if we can talk with Cody Adkins here, the Taco Bell machine. We've talked about him a little bit so far in this race. See if we can pull him up into the booth here. Hello? Cody Adkins, this is Adam in the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? Oh. Hi. Well, Cody, you've had a pretty good start to tonight's race. You uh, you started 11th. You get some stage points there. Um, been up in the top 10 for a good portion of the night. How's the car feeling? Oh, the car feels really good. Um, quite surprised so far with how it's been up in the front. Not used to it. Yeah, in Richmond, you know, a short track takes a little bit more of that throttle control and a lot of fun with uh, getting on the brakes. And uh, pretty tricky track, but uh, what have you found is working for you so far? Uh, I think just carrying over what we learned at Bristol as far as managing tires, managing the car, not tearing stuff up, and just hoping it transfers to tonight, and so far it has. Yes, sir, definitely uh, showing some good pace here and keeping up with the uh, the big guys up here in the top ten. So uh, definitely a lot of fun to see the, the Taco Bell machine in the mix, and uh, good luck to you the rest of the way. Anybody you want to give a quick shout-out to before we let you get back to racing? Give a quick shout out to the team, Loaded Dice. Quick shout out to V-Speed for broadcasting. And shout out to the league, league admins. Awesome, Cody. Well, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. All right, that was Cody Adkins, the number 81 car, as they go double file now, getting ready for that restart. Doing a good job in the Taco Bell number 81 car, and it's good to see him up here in the mix. We'll see how uh, the next 140 laps goes for him, but uh, so far, so good. And uh, it is going to be Keith Maiato, your race leader. Mark Emerson second, and now AJ Stravato. He has arrived, and he'll have a shot at challenging for that race lead here. Probably a bit sooner than most people would have expected, but that 48 car's been strong since the start of last season. And green flag back in the air, Keith Maiato. A good jump over Emerson, and here goes Stravato now to the inside. Going to try and take second away straight off of the restart. But Mark, a good run out of turn number two. He'll hang on to the spot, and uh, Stravato set to battle for third as Ryan Gemmel now clears Kevin Cornelius. Eric Hutton up here as well. You see Eric Gallion on the outside of Jeremiah Vincent. And Chris Samard and uh, trying to find some running room up there in the second and third groove. But right now not working as uh, Jeremiah Vincent going to be able to clear him. And looks like Samard as well. But here comes Hatchell going to try and get to the inside. Not going to be able to do so just yet. As Eric Gallion able to carry good speed there. And a big wiggle by Chris Samard. That will cost him some, some time. As now he's battling with teammate Seth Hatchell. 
Seth a good run out of turn two. He's going to take that spot away. Cody Adkins now looking to the outside of Samard. So Chris may have superheated the rear tires there with that slide out of turn four. And the Taco Bell Camaro trying to make its way around. And Brandon Vasquez up here in 12th position. Pretty good run for Brandon. Uh, we've seen Brandon have good qualifying speed at some of these tracks and just does not really translate over to race speed. But tonight appears to uh, have a little bit of that and uh, a bit more consistent with his qualifying speed right there around the 15th or, or 10th to 15th position where he's run all race long. So uh, definitely uh, a bit of an improvement there from Brandon. Good to see that. Keith Maiato, though, he is under pressure here at the start of stage number two. He's led 48 out of the 71 laps. And uh, currently under fire from Mark Emerson and A.J. Stravato right there as well. Uh, but uh, nobody really getting away. And so we've got about a half car length to a car length between every race car on the uh, or up here in the top 10. Uh, Seth Hatchell now into ninth position as he passed his teammate Chris Samard, who rides in that 10th spot. Take a look a little farther back. Alan Dice starting to race it up with uh, Nick Gardner, who's got some of that damage from the previous one of the previous wrecks. Appears he may have a bit more on the left side now, too. He had the right side damage from the wreck, and uh, left side he must have picked up uh, just under green. Not sure what happened to Dylan Teal. He had a long pit stop there, 24 seconds. Uh, he was up there in the top 10 for a good portion of the start of this race. Also, the 99 of uh, Nick Starling. Uh, he's in 14th, but he was up there towards the top 10. I think he may have just hit the wall as we mentioned him. Right now racing around Eric Lambert for Simulators Anonymous. And 75 laps into this thing. And... Uh, just three cautions now. We've had three lead changes as well. So not incredibly competitive at the front, but uh, has not been like a blowout by any means. Keith Maiato did pull away the end of stage one. Look at that big wiggle. Mark Emerson tries to throw the block on A.J. Stravato, and it is not going to happen. Stravato gets to the inside of Emerson, and they are going to battle for second. But Mark with a big run out of turn four. He'll take that spot back away. AJ will settle into third here for at least the moment. And a good recovery drive here by Eric Gallion, who elected to pit uh, early on in this race. And uh, right now under pressure from Seth Hatchell, who uh, kind of also came from the back. Pitted under the same set of circumstances. Not sure how many tires they get here tonight, how many sets they get at least. Let's see if I can find that, actually. Uh, looks like we have six total sets here tonight. So five additional sets from the, uh, the starting set. So you'll have to manage those wisely, and they will wear out at a track like this. Uh, usually there's about a second of fall off over the run, and uh, look at this, a challenge for the race lead. Keith Maiato uh, shuts the door on Mark Emerson. But uh, that 32 is not done yet. He is all over the back bumper. He's going to take another shot as Keith... Oh, he's going to get turned by the 32 up into the outside wall. Maiato goes around from the race lead. And Mark Emerson gets into the left rear corner of the bumper of Keith Maiato. And the yellow flag flies here at stage number two. Your race leader, Keith Maiato, going around as uh, they were driving hard and a big attempt there by Mark Emerson to try and make the pass down in turn one. Take a look at how this developed. Keith gets a decent run, but look at the 32 just closes up a little bit. Doesn't really have a whole lot more speed, but he tries to cut the, uh, the front stretch a bit shorter and that's gonna send Keith up into the outside wall. And uh, what a bummer for Keith who is having a great race. Let's take a look at uh, what happens here. So Keith kind of pulls down a little bit, but doesn't really block. It looks like the 32 just kind of drives into him. And uh, 
Yeah, Keith goes around into that outside wall. Nobody makes any contact with him, which is good. Uh, he was in a precarious spot there, sitting in turn number one, but has a lot of rear end damage to have repaired. And uh, we'll see how the admins rule this one. I know there's a new uh, set of rules uh, if you're claiming or not claiming a yellow. If I can uh, find this. Yeah, if you claim a uh, wreck as your fault, you will get sent to the back uh, on the first time. The second time you claim it, you'll get a drive through, and third time you will be DQ'd from the race. So uh, there's a bit at stake if you do claim it. Um, if you don't claim the yellow uh, to yourself, and the admins uh, review after the race, there will be a four point deduction. Uh, and then eight points uh, if you cause two, and 12 points if you cause three and don't uh, claim them. You also have a one race suspension. And uh, looks like an EOL if you don't claim it just on the, the first one. So definitely some harsh rules, but uh, trying to encourage the clean racing. And that was definitely an aggressive move by. Mark Emerson, not sure if it's exactly his fault, but uh, really pushing hard here uh, before the halfway point of the race. AJ Stravato, though, how about this drive up to second? Started in 28th. I believe he actually started farther back, having been sent to the rear. And he is all the way up here to second and uh, probably one of the fastest on the track. If you watched last year, he was extremely dominant in this race maybe the most dominant performance we've ever seen on v-speed uh i think he led all but like three laps or something like that um it's honestly kind of hard to believe that uh he was able to do that but nobody passed him under green flag circumstances uh as far as i can remember maybe eric galleon did make a pass on him for one lap but uh aj got it right back so See if he has that speed in the second half of tonight's race. The pace truck lights are off. If you're enjoying the broadcast, consider following or subscribing. You can also check us out on all these different social media outlets throughout the week see what we are up to we broadcast wednesdays and thursdays here on twitch and you can find race replays on our youtube channel and uh, we'll have a few races going up here uh, tonight so uh, keep an eye out for those if you want to catch last week's races over there on the youtube channel Right now it is Mark Emerson and AJ Stravato. Mark gets a good jump. AJ not quite as good. And there's the 17 spinning the tires a little bit again, but able to stay alongside Ryan Gemmel. Down through one and two they go. The 17, a big run on that outside. I think he might be able to clear the six. Nope. Ryan Gemmel charging back to the inside. And Ryan kind of overshoots the corner just a little bit right there, but they race it up out of turn number four. Down into one and two. Oh no, contact there. Cars in the wall. Gemmel around. Cornelius in the wall. The 77 of Eric Hutton also involved in that one. Man, that is so unfortunate. They were racing so well. The 17 got loose. Not sure if he got tapped from behind, but uh, teammates or affiliate team members involved in that one. And Gemmel having a good race as well as Kevin Cornelius. Bringing out another quick yellow flag here. And let's see what happened here as they were racing it up pretty intensely side by side. We we'll go to the overhead view. As you see the 77, or rather the 17 outside, the six down low. Eric Hutton right there behind him. He gets a nice run. 17 gets loose, gets into or the 77 of Hutton gets into him, then the 17 and the 6 
stuck there as Ryan gets a bit T-boned, but Hutton not able to check up in time, and it all just stacks up from there. And I think everyone else able to avoid the wreck. We saw a nice avoidance there by Eric Gallion. So let's go on board with Eric Heel, uh, here. And a really good avoidance just uh, kind of takes the normal line. Actually drove harder into turn number three than he normally would, but that was just to make sure they couldn't bounce off the wall into him. And a very good job by uh, Mr. Gallion to survive that, and he'll actually take over third position, I believe. So back under the yellow flag here, lap 90, and that's just halfway through stage two. Let's go to a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. I'm Robert, CEO of Drops.com, and I'm here to give you the naked truth about laundry. Size does not matter when it comes to laundry. Let's start with jugs. It's big all right, messy too, and expensive. You know why? Lots of plastic, lots of water, shipped all over the country, from factory to warehouse to retail. That's what you're paying for. It's a dinosaur, and we all know dinosaurs are extinct. Meet our imitators. This is your average detergent pod. It has 20 plus chemicals with names nobody can pronounce. Nice colors. I hope they don't stain. I know color doesn't clean. Would you take a bath in either of these? No way. That's why we developed Drops. Drops is dye-free, MPE-free, phosphate-free, animal cruelty-free. So free, it's freaking awesome. We make Drops with only six safe ingredients, certified by the EPA. Drops is tough on dirt, but gentle enough for a baby's skin. It's so gentle, I'm taking a bath in it. Doing laundry with Drops is hard to f up. One drop equals one load. Now, can we talk about my package? 100% recyclable. Manufacturing drops ourselves and distributing directly helps us reduce transportation costs. With delivery plans as low as four bucks a month, the average family can save $100 a year. Hello? What are you saying? The cleanest clothes at the lowest price? You're damn right it's a great deal. Thanks for calling. Shipping is always free. You choose the product and plan that's right for you and we'll drop drops at your door. The naked truth is that drops makes laundry better and life easier. Every drops counts, saving money, plastic, water, and time. So go to drops.com. The first one's on us. Back at the racetrack now, Mark Emerson, your race leader. He leads AJ Stravato and Eric Gallion back up now into the mix. Jeremiah Vincent there as well. Good restart by the 32. Green flag back in the air for the V-Speed 150 here from Richmond Raceway. Mark Emerson trying to win stage number two after not being able to track down Keith Miato in stage one. Got into him here in the second stage. Cody Adkins into the wall. And that's going to slow him up quite a bit. Here comes Nick Starling. Dennis Faircloth really deep into the turn there. Nearly made contact with the back bumper of Nick Starling. But uh, those drivers all continue onwards. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how Keith uh, Maiato actually makes his way through the field. Already up to 21st right now. And uh, Eric Hutton, who was just involved in the last yellow flag, right there in front of him trying to get through the pack as well as uh, ooh, three wide moment there Jordan Brockle into the outside wall as my auto gonna work to the outside of Lyle Sulford that'll put him into 19th position and Eric Hutton in 18th right now they are behind the 20 of Joey Mines Did you see that wiggle from Jordan Brockle that was wicked right there what just happened okay I thought it was worse than that it appeared he was really sideways from uh, the other perspective, but uh, really struggling right now is that 84 car, but currently 24th position, so up a few spots from where he has run most of this race. And look at this battle for the race lead starting to develop. These two pulling away now by almost a second over third place Jeremiah Vincent. And 
uh, Jeremiah able to get past Eric Galleon for that third spot here in stage number two. And Nick Starling up to fifth. Good run going for Nick here tonight. Seth Hatchell behind him nearly catches the outside wall. He's got that rear end damage on the car. Uh, that must have been from this a little stint here because I didn't see that previously. But uh, the right side damage from a wreck early on in the race. And then the rear end damage from uh, some here, somewhere here in second stage. And Nick Starlin trying to give the bumper to Eric Galleon. That is interesting here with still 20 to go in the stage. But Nick wants every point he can get. Knowing that he is not too terribly far above the cut line. 13th in points tonight. Eric Galleon though comes in pretty well off in the standings. Enters in eighth in points, but right now under fire for the fourth spot on the track. And uh, interesting how, how this has worked out. Eric led uh, the first 21 or so laps and uh, has not been able to really break the top two since that point. But uh, right now up here in fifth position as Nick Starling makes the pass on him. And now a battle for the lead again. AJ Stravato looking to the inside of Mark Emerson. And side by side, they go through one and two. AJ Stravato trying to take the lead away for the first time tonight. And really deep dive into the turn. Nearly gets up into the door of Emerson. And Mark Emerson will beat him back to the line, but still side by side. Stravato a bit easier on the brakes that time. And uh, as these two battle, Jeremiah Vincent is actually reeling them in. Stravato jumps back in line with Emerson. And uh, the top three now equally spaced out here. And it is a little ways back to Nick Starling, but not too far. Just seven tenths from Jeremiah Vincent to Nick Starling. And then it's another half a second to Eric Gallion and just a car length between him and Seth Hatchell for that fifth and sixth position. And apologize for any background noise. Uh, uh, some heating equipment in my apartment is, uh, is super noisy. But uh, look at this battle developing here at the front of the pack. Mark Emerson, AJ Stravato. Still uh, working well together. They pulled the gap, but once again on Jeremiah Vincent, he uh, just can't quite keep up. When they go side by side, though, he is able to reel him in. And here comes Nick Starling, looking very quick right now. Actually, fastest on the track last time by. So the 99 car has found something as we cross the halfway point of this race. Let's take a quick look at the recap. Five cautions in the first 105 laps, four lead changes. And uh, working on one right now, potentially, is Stravato right on the back bumper. Not sure what happened to Chris Samard. Uh, he's got that left front damage now. Um, Ryan gemmel has been able to get past him. Ryan pitted uh, not too long ago. Also, Eric Hutton pitting uh, under the previous caution. Uh, taking a look to see where Keith Miato is. Keith has taken it behind the wall. I don't know what happened with Keith. Maybe he got in an incident here. But uh, currently 31st and shows him behind the wall. Kevin Cornelius as well. He's got all that front end damage. Heading in 30th position, two laps down after a pretty good start to the race. It looks like neither of those cars are going to end up winning. But Mark Emerson trying to go for two in a row here. He would have three victories if he can win tonight, tying A.J. Stravato with these two. Obviously, the class of the field at this point in the race, they've pulled a pretty good margin over uh, Jeremiah Vincent, who is all by himself, able to shake off Nick Starling, who started to fade towards 
Seth Hatchell. The eight car having got around. Oh, look at the big slide there from Starling. He'll hang on to it. But Hatchell to the outside now for fourth. Nick dives it down into turn number one. Seth gives him plenty of room. As they exit turn number two, a big run by the V-Speed Camaro on the outside. And Nick really struggling with the rear end grip in that race car. And this is a hard place to, uh, to drive that car off if you're struggling for grip. But they continue to race it up side by side for fourth position. You can see that uh, turn in the center there, a little adjustment by Hatchell on the outside as he was exiting the turn. A little bit of a drift there into turn three, but keeps it wound up on the high side. He'll make the pass for fourth position. So Seth Hatchell climbing through the field here. He's looking for his second victory of the season. And if you watched last night, Eric Hutton, who won at Talladega, he's looking for back-to-back -back wins here on B-Speed which uh, I am not sure anyone has ever done um, in differing leagues. I think we've seen it happen in uh, the same league, just different series within that league. But uh, it would be interesting to see Eric Hutton win from uh, VRL and uh, kind of overcome some adversity here tonight. Uh, started uh, towards the rear because of uh, an EOL penalty from last week's race and right now battling with Eric Galleon, this will be for sixth position. Eric and Eric right here, 33-77. And just five laps to go as they, when they come across the, the uh, start-finish line for the stage win. And look at this battle for that stage win. The top two nose to tail. Jeremiah and Vincent starting to reel them in once again. That time by fastest on the racetrack. Jeremiah Vincent. Out of turn number four, you can see that gap has uh, really closed down quite a bit. AJ Stravato, though, starting to get alongside Mark Emerson, not able to make the run happen just yet, but uh, still within striking distance. And look at him dive it down into turn three there, closes the margin up by a half car length. That'll cost him a little bit on exit, though, as Mark Emerson really starts to stretch his legs down the front stretch, now up to two car length. But... Uh, Emerson taking a little wider arc into the turns. That allows the 48 to close up on entry. And uh, just all ends up equalizing in the end. They're running almost identical lap times. And uh, fastest last time by uh, Seth Hatchell in the 8 machine. But he has uh, over 2 seconds to go to get up there and not going to be enough laps to do that. And so... Ooh, Stravato on the apron. That's surely going to cost him a shot at the stage win. It'll be one to go this next time by. And uh, now about five or six car lengths back. It's going to be a tall order to get up there and even give him the bumper if he wanted to. But uh, Mark Emerson has got two wins on the season. No stage wins, however, as he works to the back bumper of Robert Gilmore. The 40 will give him plenty of room. And Mark Emerson out of turn four. He's going to win stage number two. AJ Stravato hangs on to second there. Jeremiah Vincent third. Let's bring up the top ten stage finishers. As we are under the yellow flag once again. Mark Emerson, your stage winner. He learned ten bonus points and one playoff point, which he already has... I believe 10 with the two victories. Jeremiah Vincent, third across the line. Seth Hatchell, fourth. Nick Starling, fifth. Eric Hutton, sixth. Eric Gallion, seventh. Chris Samard, eighth. Ryan Gemmel, ninth. Tennis Faircloth in tenth. Good recovery by Ryan uh, after getting involved in the, uh, the previous wreck. As they work up behind the pace truck, and I'm sure most drivers are going to bring it into pit lane. Maybe some will like to stay out. But uh, always kind of a mixed bag at these short tracks. You never really know what the pit call is going to be. Uh, however, it does look like almost everyone coming in. Yep. 
all the lead lap car is going to bring it down pit lane. And uh, I believe Robert Gilmore getting a lucky dog there. Should put him either one lap down or back on the lead lap. St. Fair is still trying to work towards getting a few laps back. And uh, he is he's gained one lap to this point in the race. And uh, currently 31st, so he's picked up about five positions. So uh, good to stick with it here. Timmy Emanuele, 33rd. Not sure why he's in front of Safe, but I guess he's bringing it to the pit lane. And uh, Safe will as well. Uh, so they are not going to take a wave around here. 47 laps on the tires for Timmy. And about the same for Safe. So... Uh, Mark Emerson will win the battle off pit road. AJ Stravato second as Robert Gilmore was kind of right between them, bringing it to pit lane. Interesting there, but uh, we're going to work to another quick commercial break. And we'll be right back. Simulators Anonymous is an online gaming community. The heart of this community is playing simulator style games. Everything from driving, farming, flying to the occasional survival game. We would love for you to join us. If you play these style of games or if you're just looking for a great community, we strive to be a community you can be an active participant in. By offering events like every third Saturday night is a late night trucking on Truckers MP. We have a very own Minecraft server and with other servers starting soon. Come join Simulators Anonymous today at www.simulatorsanonymous.com. Reach deep into Yerba Mate culture and you discover people have long gathered to imbibe mate to awaken the mind, perform extraordinary feats, and exchange confidences. Brewed from the naturally caffeinated and nourishing leaves of the species of holly native to the South American Atlantic rainforest, yerba mate has the strength of coffee, the health benefits of tea, and the euphoria of chocolate all in one beverage. Of the six commonly used stimulants in the world, coffee, tea, cola, cocoa, and guaraná. Yerba mate triumphs as the most balanced and healthful while it stimulates. Come to life with Guayaquil's wide assortment of yerba mate offerings, from cans to bottles to loose leaf yerba mate, all with powers to unite and energize. Coming back to green after our sixth caution of the race for the stage break there. Green flag back in the air. What a jump by Mark Emerson, who kind of lagged back a tiny bit. AJ Stravato not able to time it just right. He'll hang on to second right now as the field dives into turn number one, side by side for third between Jeremiah Vincent and Seth Hatchell. And a uh, car in the wall, I think that was Ryan Gemmel possibly. As everybody makes it through one and two, but uh, not everybody makes it through three and four. Cody Adkins in trouble here on the first lap after the restart. Cody having such a great race so far tonight and uh, involved in this one. Let's take a look at what happened. So we're racing side by side with the uh, Simulators Anonymous machine. Eric Lambert, the three, just a little deep in the turn. He tags the 81, sends him around. Not sure if anybody made contact with him, but uh, everyone does appear to avoid him. Just minor contact. Good job by Cody to save that race car. But uh, he's going to lose all his track position now back to 27th. So the challenge will be... Uh, to see if he can get back up in the mix before the race is over. It'll be uh, less than 70 to go. And 
and these laps will click by pretty quickly, right around three a minute. A little bit less than three a minute. And as Kevin Cornelius looks like he's going to get the lucky dog here and uh, potentially get back on the lead lap. He will, and now four drivers have taken it behind the wall. TJ Brendel, Justin Carey, Keith Maiato, and Jordan Brockle. So Keith, winner of stage one, not going to get his first race win of the night, or of the season, rather. And uh, not going to even get a top 30 finish, which is unfortunate to see after such a strong performance in tonight's race. So that leaves Seth Hatchell carrying the banner for Team V-Speed here in the V-Speed 150. Right now in fourth position. And Eric Gallion, he's had a very strong race, 21 laps led. Right now in the fifth position after starting on the pole. And we're going to go to another quick side-by-side -side commercial break. We'll be right back with the green flag. V-Speed is proud to be partnered with Below the Double Yellow Podcast, a podcast for NASCAR fans by NASCAR fans. Listen to Nick and Joe discuss all the latest on-track action available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. V-Speed is also proud to present the 2021 Below the Double Yellow Cup Series brought to you by the American Trucking Association starting January 14th, 825 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursdays at twitch.tv slash vspeedsim. Sim racing excitement, providing dramatic moments from iRacing and beyond. We offer broadcasting for leagues across iRacing, specialized packages to help grow your league and advertise your sponsors. I think, and right now, Stravato with that advantage. It's half a car length, the difference between first and second going into turn one. He gives the bumper to Connor Horn. Jim, these two have gone all year to get to this point. Jacob Shorba drifting up the racetrack. They make contact. The 88 goes around. The 95 goes around. The 12 caught in it. Our design team can help you create anything from paint schemes to sim rig parts with expertise in both 2D and 3D design with 3D printing capabilities. Looking to get into broadcasting yourself? We can Had to cut the commercial a bit short back towards the green flag. There it is. Mark Emerson, another good restart here. On the inside of AJ Stravato, they get back going. Green flag in the air here, under 70 laps to go. Who is going to win tonight's race at Richmond Raceway? Right now, Mark Emerson hanging on to that top spot as the field works out of turn number two. Taking a look a bit farther back here. Three wide almost for a moment. See Nick Starling back here having pitted just 10 laps ago. Uh, not sure how he got shuffled outside the top 20 like this. But uh, right now, racing it up with uh, teammate there, Zach Smith. And those American Trucking Association machines. Right now, he's stuck behind Dennis Steele and uh, the one car. You see Safe Ferris to the outside. Safe is currently 16 laps down. It's not sure. Oh, we do have a car off track. That is Dennis Faircloth. What happened to Dennis here is he took a little scenic route through the grass, went through turn number four here, up into that outside wall, down across the front stretch. Good avoidance by Ryan Gemmel. But Dennis uh, going for a little hike there through the grass. And he will get shuffled all the way back to 26th position and a long ways to go from there. But the top two once again starting to stretch their legs and they've pulled away by about a half second over Jeremiah Vincent, who's been able to pull a little gap over Eric Gallion. Seth Hatchell also up here, kind of all by himself for the moment, but behind him it is Chris Samard and Eric Hutton, those two racing it up. And Ryan Gemmel right there behind them as uh, Hutton will take that sixth position away. And 
and uh, Eric, or sorry, Nick Gardner and Dallas Sullivan right now inside the top 10 as well. See Nick here in ninth position up from 20th, big mover so far in this race. Dallas Sullivan up four spots into the top 10 and he has run right around this area all race long between 10th and 15th, but uh, right now knocking on the door of maybe a couple more positions, but here comes Alan Dice trying to challenge to get in the top 10. Not able to do so there. Chris Samart had a moment in turns one and two. I think maybe letting teammate Ryan Gemmel on pass. <clears throat> At the front, though, these two continue to fight it out. Jeremiah Vincent, a distant but not too distant third. Started in 30th, probably the biggest mover, um, maybe other than A.J. Stravato. I don't know where A.J. officially started, but uh, it had him as 28th on the grid. I think he probably started uh, closer to 32nd, 33rd. So, I mean, still, they're, they're pretty close in terms of how many positions they've gained. And that is, that is a lot. Uh, Seth Hatchell, also a big mover. He's up 25 in this race. Don't think he scored any stage points in stage one, but uh, here in, in stage two and now in stage three, looking to be in pretty good shape. And, and seeing those first three drive away, and it might be because of the damage he has on the right side of that race car. And the rear end could be really affecting the performance, especially down these long straightaways or longest straightaways for a uh, short track. Eric Gallion right here in the fifth position. He's starting to get some pressure from Eric Hutton. And once again, the Eric and Eric show in tonight's race. Hutton doing a pretty good job with the nose damage from the, uh, the wreck on the back stretch earlier. Uh, Ryan Gimmel has not really been able to pull too far away from his teammate, but those two have been able to pull uh, a couple car lengths more away from Nick Gardner. And uh, he's been able to space himself out just a little bit from Dallas Sullivan, but he is still under fire from Alan Dice. I don't know if it's just me. I only see half a car out there in that. And uh, a 57 floating between it. I don't know how that thing's rolling, but uh, it, it's pretty quick here tonight. Allen is up six spots. And trying to fight for a top ten position would be one of his better runs of the season. Coming into tonight's race. He is the first car inside the cut line to advance into the playoffs. But uh, you want to be a bit more comfortable than that. And these uh, top 15 runs will definitely help you. Uh, no stage points tonight, but... Still an opportunity to get up there and even maybe battle for a top five before it's all said and done. The top three have really broken away. They're 1.7 seconds up on Seth Hatchell. But starting to close in on some lap traffic, that is the 39 of Timmy Emanuele. But I expect Timmy to get out of the way here probably and just let these guys drive on past. Uh, not sure where he's going to go, but right now in that high lane, they'll work to the inside. And uh, he will go another lap down, 34 laps off the lead. Uh, his next closest challenger, Safe Fair, is 20 laps up on him, or about 20 up on him. So uh, unless Safe has a significant problem, which could happen with the way they're racing back here, the 99 of Nick Starling is working his way through the field up to 14th position now. And... Closing in on Tony Baird, who uh, surprisingly has led a lap here. During an earlier pit cycle, he elected to stay out a bit longer. And uh, that car is still pretty clean. He's got a little scuff on the right side, maybe a little bit on the back bumper, but uh, really not bad at all as he is under fire from that 99. And uh, Nick Starling trying to get back up into the top 10. He's going to be 13th after this pass.
And a driver who was very strong early in this. Oh, we've got Joey Mines going around. 70 car as well as everyone else avoids them. But uh, that may be the end of the race, especially for Lyle Sulfridge. The engine smoking on the number 70 Crown Royal Camaro. Let's see what happened here as they were working down the back straightaway, kind of in the back of our camera shot. So Lyle Sulfridge up here in front. I think he maybe got a little bit loose. Yep, and it right across the nose of the 20, and that sends both of them hard into the inside wall. Uh, I'm not sure if Dennis Faircloth made some contact as well with the inside wall, but uh, he took evasive maneuvers here. Actually, it looks like he might have just gotten loose all on his own and able to slow it down in time. But uh, Dennis has had kind of a mixed bag race here tonight. Uh, by far his standout performance of the season being at Road America. As they are checking up in front of him here to get onto pit lane. So Mark Emerson will lead the field. Ryan Gemmel elects to stay out on the racetrack with 31 laps on the tires. And no one else. As Brett Sommer is going to be the lucky dog here in the uh, Boston Web Marketing Camaro. He'll get back on that lead lap. We'll see if Ryan brings it in, if he's just trying to lead a lap or something here. I'm not exactly sure what the strategy call would be. Uh, not really seen anybody take two tires at all, which has been uh, an option in the past. It looks like Jordan Scheffler may be taking two. So he had just a nine and a half second pit stop. Uh, but Jordan, a quiet race tonight, started 31st. He has gained quite a few. Not sure if he has a penalty right now, though. That does appear to be the case. Maybe speeding on exit so uh, that is going to negate any benefit of the two tire call and uh, Ryan Gemmel does not elect to bring it in so this could get very interesting on the restart he's also going to keep the 44 and extra lap down if he doesn't bring the car back in but safe right now really not uh, battling with anyone uh, although he might be able to gain some spots if Lyle Sulfridge is on pit road for long enough but uh, Lyle they get the engine patched up on that in just a lap. And uh, he is back rolling now in the 29th position. But it looks like pace truck lights remain on. Let's see if we can get a quick word in with... Uh, let's see if we can talk with Tony Baird. I don't know if we... Talked with Tony very much this season. See if we can pull him up real quickly before they get going. Oh, you know what? Oh, there he is. He's in the hallway. Interesting. Tony Baird, Adam in the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. Well, Tony, you've kind of been minding your own business in this race. We saw you with a kind of different strategy early on. You led a lap, and uh, right now in the 14th position, uh, how's the car feeling, and what do you got here for these last uh, 40 or so laps? Uh, car's definitely tight for me. I'm not the greatest short track racer, especially at Richmond, so I figured stay out, try to get as many points as I can, and surprisingly doing not too bad right now. Yeah, definitely uh, holding your own up here inside the top 15. Looks like you guys are about to go green, so uh, a quick interview, but uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right, Tony Baird, number 98. Figured we'd be getting the one go the next time. Got one question in at least, but uh, Ryan Campbell, your race leader, he's got some older tires, and he's going to get a tap from A.J. Stravato, and actually a pretty good restart for Ryan on the older tires there. Never really know what to expect. We'll see how he does dive it into turn one, but leading a few laps here, and he is under pressure already. A.J. Stravato looking to the inside. He's going to go to the outside, and that might hold up. 
The 32, and actually Stravato not able to put the power down. Ryan's still hanging on to it, but they are going to split him here three wide for the race lead. And that is going to give the advantage to Mark Emerson on the high side, and Ryan's going to start dropping like a rock here. Uh, interesting pit strategy call, but uh, the 48 down low trying to take this lead away. I don't know if he's gotten that car out front at all tonight. No laps led, but that is about to change as he's got a big advantage. Oh, and making contact with Mark Emerson across the start-finish line. He will take the lead away, but Mark probably not all that happy about that. They were right up on each other's doors. AJ kind of pushed him up the hill, and then the 32. A little bit of left front damage now. We'll see how that affects him. But Seth Hatchell moves into third position with all of that uh, kind of chaos on the start. Ryan Gemmel's already fallen back to eighth and under fire from Nick Gardner. And it'll be Nick Starling and Dallas Sullivan in just a moment. As uh, there goes Gardner. Here comes Starling. And uh, well, maybe Ryan already used all his sets of tires. Shows five pit stops for him. And uh, he may not have any tires left. The yellow flag going to fly. It looks like Robert Gilmore on the backstretch in the uh, Simulator's Anonymous Silver Bullet going around here. Let's see what happened to Robert. Nothing too crazy. Just... Uh, Self-spin here out of turn number two. Harden in the inside wall and no other, other cars really around him. Just Timmy Emanuele there to uh, essentially trigger that caution. But uh, Robert Gilmore already last car one lap down and uh, that is not going to help his chances in tonight's race uh, for much better than a, about a 25th place run. We'll see what he does here under the... Uh, yellow flag by AJ Stravato, your new race leader. And uh, once again, that 48 car finds himself in position to win a race, potentially, with not too many laps remaining. We're going to go to another quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Hey, honey. It's happening. The baby's coming. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm on the way. Hey, buddy. You ready for the big game? You're gonna be there, right, Dad? Oh, uh, you can count on me. I wouldn't miss him for the world. Hey, honey, Josh's flight landed early. He'll be about 6.30. Can you make it? Okay. I'm on my way. We've got total gridlock out there this afternoon. The average American spends over 40 hours a year, nearly two full days, stuck in traffic on our broken roads and bridges, while our lives move full speed ahead. It doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> Where is he? Husband's on his way. <laughs> It's time for Washington to get America moving again by finally funding our country's infrastructure. Where's mom? Tell Washington to fund America's infrastructure because life won't wait.
back to the racetrack now. Green flag back in the air. AJ Stravato, what a jump there. As he is able to pull well out in front of Mark Emerson, who is now under fire from Seth Hatchell for the second spot. Seth works down to the inside here. Is he able to get the run out of turn two? Very good run there. We haven't seen much of that, but maybe the damage now hindering the 32 just a little bit. As Stravato starting to pull a, ma uh, a margin over these guys. And Hatchell now working up into second spot. I think this is about how they ended the last season's race here. Hatchell was pretty strong, especially in the closing laps of that one. Able to stay off the wall right there. Oh, a little bit of a slide for Nick Gardner. Able to hang on to it, but we do have a caution. The 17 machine of Kevin Cornelius going around. And that car uh, a little bit more hurt than it was. And uh, not going to be uh, very useful in uh, trying to get... A solid finish here tonight. Not sure what happened exactly. Let's take a look. So that bright green machine, that is Kevin Cornelius. You see the one of Zach Smith right there behind him. Uh, Zach just kind of deepened in the turn. The 17, they kind of come together. Uh, Kevin pretty much had it saved. And then, oh, big hit there. Jordan Schepler, the 68 of Kyle Payne, who's had a very quiet race. And survived everything to this point in the Outlaw Desert Racing Machine. Uh, he's going to take a big hit right here. You see him wrecking up there. Things just come at you really fast at these short tracks. And uh, Kyle not able to react there quick enough. Uh, I don't know if it would have been real possible to do that. That was a tough situation. But uh, he's going to join the Modified Club along with uh, a few others here. And back under the yellow flag, I believe that is the 10th caution of the night. Seven lead changes here. AJ Stravato is your current race leader. As the field works through turns three and four under the yellow flag, we'll probably get the restart with around 25 laps to go. So uh, not going to be a lot of time. And, man, A.J. Stravato, don't know how he does it week in and week out, but he is up here in contention to win this thing after starting from the back and looking for his fourth victory of the season and uh, definitely putting an exclamation point on a championship challenge uh, for the second year in a row. He has been the favorite. Already three wins in the first six races. He's looking for four in the first seven which might even be a better percentage than he had last year at this point. I think he had two or three. Maybe he did have four going into the 10th race of the season. But uh, he had a total of nine overall with the all-star race victory as well. So 10 if you want to throw that in there uh, out of a total of 21 races last year, including that all-star race. And right now uh, on a pretty good path to try and match that or exceed that if he can get his fourth win of the night. But Seth Hatchell looking for his second. Can't count out the driver of the number eight car. Often finds himself up here in the mix late in the going as well. No matter how much he's been through, he somehow always emerges with at least a solid top 20 run, or uh, almost always at least. It's very uncommon to see that eight car uh, outside the top 10 Another driver that we were used to seeing consistency from, but uh, actually, don't know where he is tonight. Actually, I don't think Josiah is here. Yeah, I don't see Josiah Vincent here at all tonight. Uh, Josiah was one of the final four drivers last season, along with Jeremiah Vincent. Eric Hutton and AJ Stravato. And uh, to this point in the season, Jeremiah and Josiah have not had the seasons that they had last season. Josiah was probably the most consistent driver of anyone. I think it was something like uh, 14 top fives or, or top tens. I think uh, he had the most top tens by uh, at least a few. I think it might have even been 18. Um out of 20 races, which is absolutely incredible. Um, but to AJ with the most top fives in last season, as he gets a good jump, goes straight away. Mark Emerson able to time it as well. He's going to pull 
uh, out in front of Seth Hatchell. Seth maybe going to try and cross him over into turn one. Uh, not going to have the run to do so. Mark Emerson really dives it down into the corner, and Seth will have to settle for third position right now. But Mark Emerson he got uh, kind of pushed out of the way by that 48. We'll see if there's any kind of bad blood here as they uh, get back to racing. It'll be right around 25 to go next time by. And uh, Eric Hutton, he's up in the mix here as well. Uh, we're used to seeing Eric run pretty well at these short tracks. And right now, uh, started eighth, but he's been up and down throughout the field. Actually had to start from the rear, so that eighth position is nullified. He started right back there with AJ Stravato. And yellow flag going to fly again. And it is the one of Zach Smith uh, once again going around. Let's see what happened to Zach, who's been involved in quite a few things tonight. So I think it involved the 1 and the 98 as they work through 3 and 4. Zach Smith down low. The 98 catches the outside wall, comes across the nose of Zach, sends him around. Not sure what happened with the 98, how much uh, he was able to hang on to it, it appears. But uh, close call there. And a bit of right side damage and now the uh, left rear damage. And the big, uh, big loser on that one is Zach Smith, who loses a lot of track position now back to last car on the lead lap. And I tell you what, before this is all said and done, Safe Ferris could have a top 30. I mean, he's in 30th, but he might even be in the 20s. Uh, Kevin Cornelius off the track uh, in about seven laps. He'll move up to 29th. So goes to show you never give up. And uh, Safe missing the first 16 laps of the race. He's been able to stay up to speed and uh, had qualified seventh. I would imagine he would have been up here racing for a top five position throughout the night uh, if things had gone a bit differently. But right now, AJ Stravato with the car out in front here. It'll be right around 20 laps to go when we get going again. Let's see if we can talk with Mr. Dennis Faircloth. He's had a, a mixed bag of a night as well. in here oh, there he is and the guys that I'm looking to, to pull up they keep uh, separating themselves in their own room Dennis Faircloth Adam in the v-speed booth you got a copy yes well Dennis you've had kind of a mixed uh, night tonight you're right now in 17th position uh, you know you were right around the 20th spot for quite a while we saw you up towards the top 10 Car's got some damage on it, but uh, what do you think you got here for these last 20 or so laps? I honestly have no clue. I'm just trying to keep it under me right now. Um, I got tied off of turn four, trying to stay off of uh, whoever was on the inside of me and caught the wall and thankfully didn't spin it completely out. But I really wanted that to be a caution, though. <laughs> yeah, we did see that. And, uh, you know, you got the nose damage. Do you think it's affecting the performance at all, or you think you still got enough pace to, to run with these guys around you? Not real sure. I mean, I'm down on a little bit of power. I'm idling at around 1980, 1990 right now. So, um, but I mean, we'll see. I'm just trying to finish at this point. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, it could get pretty wild here. We've seen a lot of, you know, quick yellow flags on these restarts. Uh, do you uh, do you have any uh, kind of insight as to why that could be happening? Just car stacking up or, or something like that? I mean, that last restart was really spread out. Us in the back were really spaced out. And by the time I got into turn one, I was going way faster than I expected and ran in the back of the seven car. And then they wrecked the next lap anyway. So yep. I don't I think we're just running out of patience. <laughs> yeah, a lot of yellow flags will do that to you. Well, uh, you know, good to see you still out here and, and still in one piece for the most part. But uh, good luck the rest of the way and, and uh, try and get the best finish you can. Thanks, Adam. All right, that is Dennis Faircloth, the number 80 machine, who has uh, got a bit of nose damage at this point. The car uh, looks, I think, worse than it actually is. But uh, we'll see if he can survive the rest of the way. 
second. Right now, it is going to be A.J. Stravato looking for his fourth victory of the season. And then also Mark Emerson looking for his third. Actually, uh, three race winners here in the top three is Seth Hatchell with the race victory as well. And back underway, green flag in the air. Good restart again by A.J. Stravato. He'll pull a couple car lengths out in front. And now Hatchell challenging for second. This is a much better restart for him. And uh, we'll see if he can complete the pass here down into turn number three as he gets a great run out of turn two. Mark Emerson right there alongside, really going to try and hold him down. We'll see if he pulls the cross over here out of the corner. Hatchell, a good run there, able to hang on to it. And Emerson not able to make the move down into turn number one. So Seth Hatchell going to try and chase down A.J. Stravato. We'll see if the Camaro's got anything in it. And yellow flag going to fly again. This is exactly what A.J. wants to see. Not going to allow anybody to really have a chance to uh, make up ground on him. As it looks like maybe Ryan Gemmel, Brandon Vasquez, and others involved in this one. Let's see what happened here. Uh, very similar situation to what we just saw in the previous wreck. Side by side out of turn number four. Dylan Teal up into the outside wall. Bounces off down into Brandon Vasquez. And uh, they're all trying to hang on to it. Ooh, big hit for Ryan Gemmel, I think. And some more cars involved. Nick Alves, Zach Smith comes piling in there. Uh, Ryan Gemmel, he's going to have some serious damage on that race car. They're getting turned head on into the outside barrier. Oh, man. Eric Lambert with the wreck avoidance. Maybe of the race. Gonna look at what happened to Zach Smith here as well as he did not get on the binders hard enough. Just slams into these guys. Uh, the 98 of Tony Barrett also involved in it. But uh, who was I talking about? Eric Lambert. Oops, it's the wrong end of the race car. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. This is one of those pucker moments, as they like to call them. Nearly gets in the wall himself, and then the kind of shoots the gap. He does get into the 78, but oh man, what a close call with Ryan Gebel coming across the track. And uh, Gemmel, things going from bad to worse for him. And it uh, looks like a handful of race cars going to come to pit lane, but Eric Lambert surviving that for the most part. Bit of damage on both ends of the car now, but at least he has those ends of the car as opposed to... Uh, Maybe say Kyle Payne right there behind him. No front end. But still 15th position, and he was he started shotgun. Dead last on the field. Other than uh, Safe Fair is not making the start. But right now up here in the top 15, so still trucking in that 68 car. Another modified right there. Nick Alves back on the track. And we're going to go to another quick commercial break. We will be right back. V-Speed is proud to be partnered with Below the Double Yellow Podcast, a podcast for NASCAR fans by NASCAR fans. Listen to Nick and Joe discuss all the latest on-track action available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. V-Speed is also proud to present the 2021 Below the Double Yellow Cup Series, brought to you by the American Trucking Association, starting January 14th, 825 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursdays at twitch.tv slash vspeedsim. Hey, honey. It's happening. The baby's coming. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm on the way. Hey, buddy. You ready for the big game? You're going to be there. Right, Dad? Uh, you can count on me. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Hey, honey, Josh's flight landed early. He'll be about 6.30. Can you make it? Okay. I'm on my way. We've got total gridlock out there this afternoon. The average American spends over 40 hours a year, nearly two full days, stuck in traffic on our broken roads and bridges while our lives move full speed ahead. It doesn't have to be this way. Where is he? Husband's on his way. <laughs> It's time for Washington to get America moving again by finally funding our country's infrastructure. Where's mom? Tell Washington to fund America's infrastructure because life won't wait.
back at the racetrack now, about ready to get going. It's going to be AJ Stravato, Seth Hatchell on the front row, and then Mark Emerson, Eric Hutton, Jeremiah Vincent, Chris Samard, rows two and three. Good restart once again by AJ Stravato. He'll jump out to at least a three or four car length lead over Hatchell, who's going to get passed up straight away by Mark Emerson. Seth can't cross him over, almost gets run into by Eric Hutton. As we are approaching 10 laps to go, things heating up here outside the top five. You see Nick Starling and Eric Gallion side by side. Chris Samard up here as well. Jeremiah Vincent. These guys all battling for positions inside the top 10. Nick Starling pulls down in line behind Gallion and in front of Nick Gardner. And uh, they're checking up just a little bit here down in that low line. But out in front, it is AJ Stravato. With the race lead, it'll be 10 to go this time by Mark Emerson, not too far behind him. And Seth Hatchell, just a couple car lengths there as well. But AJ Stravato capitalizing on a late race pass. A lot of cautions following that pass to really limit the time that anyone has to work. And it'll be 10 to go. He's led 32. And it's been the last 32 so far. Yellow flag going to fly again. The 13 of Jordan Shepler involved in this one. Let's take a look at what happened to Jordan here on the back straightaway. And uh, another solo incident here as uh, Jordan just uh, really hard on the exit of the corner and just slams the outside wall, slams the inside wall. And uh, going to hurt that car pretty significantly. Hits the wall as he's trying to get turned around. Once again, let's, uh, let's go back to take a look at this. Oh, already happened in that. So there you see, just uh, a little too strong. Didn't get down to the yellow line and uh, that bit you know, off that bit of distance up the track is, is going to cost you on exit. And that is what uh, just happened right there to Jordan. Uh, about the probably fourth or fifth time we've seen that happen. And I kind of mentioned it pre-race that those are the uh, tricky areas of the track. And uh, once again, biting another race car here tonight. Let's take a quick look at the recap here. 13 cautions in the race tonight. Uh, we did have a couple of decent green flag runs. I think some 20, 30 laps. Um, but when cautions have come, they have come frequently. And uh, a couple of those are four stages. So 11 for Rex, uh, which is uh, probably about par for the course here at Richmond. Uh, either of these races go entirely green or it can be hard to get them going green uh, once they aren't green anymore. But uh, right now... It'll be a restart with less than five to go. We have 25 cars on the lead lap, Jordan Shepler being the last of those. And uh, first car and only car one lap down is Nick Alves. And we have a couple cars on the pit road right now. Ryan Gemmel is, uh, I think he was overheating potentially, or maybe the rear axle knocked out of it. Uh, but right now, 28th position after leading a few laps here, starting up there in the top five and kind of running up and down through the field tonight. Uh, his race is going to be cut a bit short, I believe. Not sure if he'll be able to get going again. See Dylan Teal pulling off the pit road. Dylan, 25th. Uh, after starting up there in the top 10, I think he ran as high as about 6th or 7th. And uh, it has been downhill from there for Dylan. as he is going to continue to pit farm that race car, get some more damage repaired. Uh, we'll have at least one or two more laps to go under yellow. And we'll see how many we have left when we get going green again. But uh, it has been an interesting race. We've seen a lot of side-by-side -side battling, some drama at the front of the pack. We're going to go take a look back at uh, one of the highlight highlights in tonight's race. See if it'll actually... jump back I don't think it will nope so we'll have to uh, figure out how that works but uh, Keith Miotto got, in, got turned from the race lead off the nose of Mark Emerson and then Keith was not able to uh, complete the race not sure what happened to 
his car, but we are going to get the one to go here. And it will be a four-lap shootout to the end of this one. I really think A.J. Stravato, as long as he doesn't make any mistakes here, it will be his race to lose. Mark Emerson's going to have to time the restart absolutely perfectly to have any chance at uh, making the pass. That 48 car has been very good all race long. Pace truck makes the hard left-hand turn, maybe for the final time. Good restart by the 48. Mark gets a solid start, but he's going to still be under attack by Seth Hatchell, so that will slow those two up, and that'll allow Stravato to pull out in front by at least a couple of car lengths. As Hatchell pushing the issue, he's going to try and complete that pass as quickly as he can, but uh, Mark Emerson not giving up just yet in that high lane. They are door-to-door -door out of turn four. Down the front straightaway, Emerson with the advantage across the line, but Stravato streaking away. The gap now over three-tenths of a second, and they are still side-by-side -side back there. This is uh, not going to work out for either of them if they continue this, but uh, you can never give up, and uh, you can't get to first if you uh, can't get to second, so that is what they are fighting for right here, and Hatchell with the advantage of the line that time. Two laps remaining for A.J. Stravato as he looks like he's going to take away his fourth win of the season. But it is not over yet. Mark Emerson shoved up the racetrack there. What happened? A little bit of a contact there from the nine machine, and that's what happened. But now Stravato, the white flag in the air, looking for victory number four out of seven this year. Seth Hatchell in second. And then Jeremiah Vincent in the third position behind them eric hutton mark emerson eric gallion and company but it is all aj stravato once again he has done it in the below the double yellow cup series spinning across the line he will win at richmond in the v speed 150 congrats to aj leading the last 42 laps like he's done so many times the clutch coming through And the 48 car of A.J. Stravato in victory lane. Once again, fireworks going off. As they have all race long, we've seen a lot of beating and banging here tonight. As Stravato burns him down here on the front straightaway. Gonna pull in the grass there, it looks like. Maybe stay away from that outside wall. But congrats again to A.J. Stravato, the waste management, number 48. Let's see if we can pull him up in the booth here straight away, actually, and uh, we'll try and run through these interviews pretty quickly tonight. AJ Stravato, Adam of the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? Sir. Well, AJ, win number four, and you didn't have it all your way tonight. You had to come from the rear. And you picked your way up through the field so quickly that uh, barely, barely remembered that you even started back there. But, man, what a race. Uh, tell us how you feel and, and how you got it done tonight. It was a lot of fun. I think uh, just getting through traffic early in the day was pretty much the key. Make sure we get as best track position as we could when we could. Had a couple really good pit stops. And once you kind of got track position, all you had to do is just kind of control the line and uh dirty air kind of took over from there i think after like 20 or 30 laps so just kind of did that and uh brought it home yeah and a lot of cautions kind of breaking things up here and you know how important was it to get that lead uh you know when you did and and with the cautions following to really kind of make it more difficult on those guys yeah cautions uh they kind of fell especially in the third stage there like consistently and continuously so uh once we kind of had fresh tires and track position Nobody around us was really willing to gamble because it's definitely harder to get to the field uh, with, I'd say, you know, 20, 30 lap older tires than uh, you think. So especially when we have a big field like we do, uh, this league does a great job at, you know, recruiting a lot of people in there. So get good size field. So uh, just wanted to make sure we kept that track position once we got by Mark. Uh, that was definitely a little difficult to get by him, but he's a teammate of mine. So obviously I'm not going to try and wreck him for any position, just hard racing and, yeah, they're able to bring it home. So really happy with that effort and pretty cool to say we went from the back to the front. Yeah, it doesn't happen all that often. Uh, you know, at its short track especially, it's, it's hard to even survive to get up there. Another place hard to survive, it's a place you were at just last night in the uh, Virtual Racing League, uh, Talladega. That's where we're going next week. 
Uh, you know, how do you feel about going there? Yesterday, I just made a, uh, I think, a little bit too late of a move. Uh, that was a lot of fun uh, yesterday. A little upset that uh, I wasn't able to bring it home after what I thought was a race winning move, but definitely looking forward to Talladega next week. I think we got to be, uh, I think, a little bit more careful uh, next week. So we'll try and probably hang in the back and hopefully at the end of the race, me and my teammates can come up on through the field like we did uh, yesterday at VRL and just kind of control the race and control the lane and let one of us decide it out and who's going to win. So definitely looking forward to that and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Yes, sir. And uh, that would be win number five if you can collect one there. But man, four rate, four wins in the first seven races. You are on a tear once again this season in the below the double yellow cup series. You start uh, it says 28th, but I think you started closer to 32nd or 33rd. You lead the last 42 laps and another clutch victory like we've seen so many times. Uh, Who would you like to give a shout-out to that made tonight's win possible? Yeah, I think we were uh, third from last there, if I remember correctly. But definitely uh, you, Adam, for doing a great job. Uh, buy yourself in the broadcast booth. I think that uh, you do a hell of a job with these. Um, obviously, below the W Cup Series um, podcast. ATA, Illinois Trucking Association, and uh, all the other sponsors that uh, make this league happen. It's uh, definitely a lot of fun to be a part of, and wish we didn't get a little bit of caution happy at the end of the race there, but I think uh, before that, the first two stages, it was uh, very clean and a lot of fun, and I think a lot of respect out there, so uh, always good to be a part of, and you know, looking forward to next week. Yes, sir, and we're looking forward to it as well. Congrats on the win, and we'll catch up with you then. All right, that is AJ Stravato, race winner for tonight's race at Richmond. Let's go to second place finisher, Seth Hatchell. We'll see if we can pull him in, up in the booth here straight away. Seth Hatchell, Adam in the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, Seth, you started towards the rear tonight. Didn't take a qualifying time. And, uh, man, you, you, were, uh, you were in the mix of things pretty much all race long. There were cautions happening around you. Uh, you were able to navigate through the chaos for the most part and uh, you come out of here with a nice solid second place run had a shot at it there in the late going but uh ultimately the caution seemed to uh, to put a damper on things but uh, uh give us a rundown of your race and, and how you feel uh about the second place finish yeah overall pretty happy uh i had to take an eul at the start of the race i ended up wrecking uh the 71 of lane sulfridge last week so i felt bad about that and i told him i'll take an eol this week and then off the get-go is pretty wild. I was hoping we were going to get a bit more green flag runs, but we never really got anything too big. And all the big ones were in the first couple of stages. So, um, you know, I was working my way up a bit. I think we had that lap 20 caution or whatever, and I came in and took tires because I had pretty much nothing to lose. I think I only lost three spots on the pit stop. And then that restart after that, I got damaged, so had to come back in and get that fixed, start at the back. And I think it was finally by the end of stage two, I was like up into the top 10 and then, you know, making my way forward still a little bit. And then the end of the race just didn't have enough laughs to see if I could challenge AJ or not. was kind of disappointed I didn't get another chance because the end there with all the cautions was just me and Mark switching spots on the restarts, which sucks, but it is what it is. So i um, happy with the second place. This place hasn't always been kind to me. So coming out of here with second isn't too bad. Yeah, I think that's your fourth or fifth second of the season. And, uh, you know, in the first seven races, that's that's definitely a, a strong stat line to have. Uh, you have the race win back at Daytona, and you're right up there in the fight for the uh, championship lead. So it's been a good start to the year for you here and another strong performance tonight. Um, and we go to Talladega next week. I know, uh, you know, you've got a pretty good strategy with your teammates out there uh, at those races, but how are you feeling about that track? Uh, feeling so so this package generates such huge runs there it's really hard to uh, you can make stuff happen on your own but if there's enough cars at the end two by two it's really hard to get by people so we really have to be banking on it can kind of spread out towards the end and we a lot of times see fuel mileage at these races which i think suits our team so just a matter of having some numbers towards the end and getting things sorted out i think we should be uh pretty well off yeah, it worked out for you guys at Daytona for sure. You basically swept the top uh, five or six there. I think there was only one other team, uh, you know, no, a driver from another team just won in the top uh, six or seven positions. So 
We'll see if you guys can repeat that kind of a performance at Talladega, but uh, in tonight's race, you come from outside the top 30 to finish second right behind the 48 machine, and uh, a good run for you here. Anybody you want to give a shout-out to before we let you go? Yeah, I gotta give a shout-out to you, Adam, for doing a great job with the broadcast, allowing all my friends and family to watch, and giving everybody a good show. Um, got to thank all the sponsors of the league um, for, you know, putting into this league to help us do what we do. Um, Nick and all the admins for doing a great job. Um, drivers for, for uh, putting on a good race and my team V-Speed. Awesome, Seth. Well, congrats on another strong performance here tonight. And we'll catch you next week at Talladega. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. That was Seth Hatchell. Second place for Team V-Speed in the V-Speed 150. Just one spot short of the victory but uh, another strong run for him we'll pull up jeremiah vincent next jeremiah vincent adam in the v-speed booth you got a copy yeah copy well jeremiah you started deep in the field here tonight uh, as well as the other drivers who finished up here on the podium with you uh you all started uh 30th or worse and end up coming out of here with podium finishes uh, you worked your way up through the field pretty, uh, you know, p pretty carefully with uh, AJ Stravato right there in front of you. Um, but strong run here tonight. Your best of the season, uh, a third place finish. How do you feel about that? Uh, much needed. Uh, it's been a <laughs> rough season starting. I think this is the first race I finished without any damage on me. It's been getting caught up in a lot of messes here and there. Yeah, I think, uh, so you came into tonight's race, uh, I believe, 16th or 17th, yeah, 17th in points, so first car on the outside looking in, and, uh, you know, this is really going to help you there, I think it'll catapult you inside the top 16 in points, and, you know, after, uh, you know, being in the final four last season, uh, you know, how has it felt to, to kind of be, you know, uh, you know, not, not the start you've wanted this season, and you think this is a turning point moving forward? Yeah, I think so. I got a couple of good tracks coming up uh, right before the the playoffs start. And uh, yeah, the way it started, and I was like, wasn't sure if I was actually gonna make it <laughs> to get another run. But it's after tonight, I got a little more confidence in. Just really wish there was more green flag runs because I felt like I had something for them. Yeah, a lot of uh, segmented runs there. A lot of cautions, kind of breeding cautions, which is is so common at these types of racetracks. But uh, you kept the car in one piece, like you said. Uh, no damage, really, that, that I could see. Um, so definitely good on you for doing that. Not many cars out there finished without damage. Uh, you know, how did the car feel overall as you, you were passing and uh, making a way out there? Uh, early on, uh, the car just felt a little, a little snug. I just uh, just taking it easy. But as I, the track got rubbered up, it, it fell into my, hand, my hands a little more. I like the car rotating real well on the free side. And... It just, like when the tires got worn out, I felt that that was when I was the strongest. Uh, I was starting to gain a lot, lot more on guys. Yeah, it definitely looked like uh, as the runs would go on, you'd be able to reel in uh, Mark Emerson and AJ Stravato. We'd see you kind of come and go, and then ultimately at the end of the run, you start pulling them back in. So I was always hoping you'd get up there in the mix with them. It's just not enough laps, it seemed. But uh, third place run, we go to Talladega. I know you and your teammates love going out there, and, uh, you've had some good performances at those tracks. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, uh, we <laughs> we tried something different there at Daytona. It did not work well. A lot of us got taken out. Um, so we'll probably go back to the drawing board and do what works and uh, hopefully finish up, up front again. Yeah, we'll see if you can uh, get up there and, and follow up this third place run. But uh, start 30th, you gain a total of 27 spots here. I think, uh, you know, you're right up there with the biggest movers of the race. So, uh you know, a great run for you here. Anybody you want to give a shout out to? Uh, shout out to my teammates. Uh, have, have a good run tonight. Um, AJ, great job on winning it. Um, shout out to you, Adam. You always do a great, great job here on V Speed. Shout out to the ATA Trucking for sponsoring the league and all the other sponsors jumping on for uh, filling these races. We really appreciate it. And uh, shout out to all the viewers. Thank you for coming out and watching uh, this great broadcast. Well, thank you, Jeremiah, and we'll catch you next week at Talladega. All right. Have a good one, man. Thank you. You too. That was Jeremiah Vincent, third place finisher. We're going to go to the rest of the results. As uh, It was a bit of a caution fest there in stage number three. It can get like that here at uh, the Richmond Raceway, but 
uh, those first couple of stages, some great action, some drama, and everything you'd want from short track racing uh, here at Richmond. Uh, 13 cautions, 7 total lead changes, and A.J. Stravato, he got to the lead, and he never gave it back up. Seth Hatchell ultimately coming home in second there behind him, but Stravato winning his fourth race of the season. Uh, on a tear once again this year, and uh, probably going to be the favorite to win back-to-back, -back. but uh, some guys really starting to challenge him. You saw, uh, um, you saw Mark Emerson up there and uh, Keith Miato, both of those drivers very quick tonight. Uh, Jeremiah Vincent finishes third. Eric Hutton finishes fourth. Mark Emerson gets shuffled back to fifth in the late going of that race, but good run from him, winning stage number two. Eric Gallion finishes sixth. Great run after starting on the pole. Nick Gardner seventh. Chris Samardin eighth. Cody Adkins, after uh, being involved in a couple things, rebounds to finish ninth. Dennis Faircloth, who uh, we weren't sure how he was going to end up doing here, but tenth position in the end. Great perseverance there. The 11th Position goes to Alan Dice, 12th, Eric Lambert, 13th, Tony Baird, 14th, Dallas Sullivan, 15th, was uh, Lane Sulford, 16th, Brett Sommer, 17th, Brent, uh, Brandon Vasquez, 18th, Zach Smith, 19th, Joey Mines, and rounding out the top 20, Kyle Payne. 21st, Dennis Steele, 22nd, Dylan Teal, 23rd, was Lyle Sulfridge, 24th, Jordan Scheffler, 25th, Nick Starling, 26th, Nick Alves, 27th, Robert Gilmore, 26th Ryan or 28th Ryan Gemmel, 29th Safe Ferris, rounding out the top 30, Kevin Cornelius. 31st was Timmy Emanuele, 32nd Jordan Brockle, 33rd Keith Maiato, 34th Justin Carey. And rounding out the field tonight, TJ Brendel, heavy damage on that race car early on, takes him out of the race, 35th position here tonight. But once again, your race winner, AJ Stravato. Congrats again, fourth win of the season, and that will do it for tonight's race at Richmond. I want to thank all the sponsors that make it possible, and I uh, want to thank the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series for uh, once again having us back here and uh, putting on these great races. Hope you enjoyed. Please consider following or subscribing. You can check us out at all of these different social media outlets that you see on the screen. And if you want to learn more about what we do at vSpeed, uh, from broadcasting to custom merchandise, custom design work, and more. Check us out at vspeedsim.com to learn more about us. You can check out race replays on our YouTube channel as well and keep up with us throughout the week on Facebook and Twitter. And let's see who we can jump in with uh, for tonight. Uh, the Car Anomaly 500 for eracer.gg is going on right now. We'll hand you off to them. And we will be back next Wednesday night with the Virtual Racing League and Thursday night with the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series. I want to thank uh, those last two that followed us there, the Hunters Club and Poochie Dumpling. Great names. And uh, thank you so much for following. And everyone, have a great night.